In this video, we're going to talk about carbocation rearrangement. Now, you can already see the autofocus in this video is terrible. I'm so sorry. I figured out how to fix it for the next one, and it won't be like this. First, let's look back at our old hydration example. Now, it was a simple alkene with just a methyl group on every end of this double bond. It didn't matter whether the H added to either side because they were the same. Now you can see why this was a pretty facile example, because we weren't considering selectivity at all. Then we looked at what would happen on the addition to an alkene with three methyls and a hydrogen attached. We learned about Markovnikov's selectivity. The H would stick with the side that had more H's already. These are all pretty simple molecules so far, without any branching on their side chains. But the plot thickens. This is also observed to happen. Let's say you had an alkene with three hydrogens around it and a tert butyl group. You would isolate your product, do some NMR, and find this. That does not look like our starting material. I'm going to show you a general approach you'll want to take with figuring out organic chemistry problems where you don't know exactly what happened. Look at your original structure, and then look at your final structure. In the original, we had this rough four carbon backbone. Now in the final, we can also find a four carbon chain, still there. Now on the third carbon of the original chain, there were two methyl groups attached. There's only one methyl group attached to the same carbon in the final product. We'll mark one of the originals as good, still in the product, and one of them's missing. The OH is very obviously new, and you see a double bond missing. There's also an extra hydrogen over there. While we can't fully explain the positions yet, we know that to get rid of a double bond, add an H and an OH, that's hydration. Lastly, we see this methyl group. This methyl group was not there before. That's new. The way to explain this with the fewest possible changes in the molecule is that a methyl group moved. This is new to us, so now we're going to look at how this happened. Here's a full arrow pushing mechanism. We have our original alkene in sulfuric acid and water. We know what happens here. This is the beginning of hydration. The nucleophile is the alkene, which attacks a proton from the sulfuric acid, which is probably on hydronium. Either way, it creates this carbocation. Now, one of the methyl groups directly next to the carbocation moves with its electrons and bonds to that carbon that previously had an empty p orbital. The net result here is that we've gone from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary carbocation. We know that because of hyperconjugation, tertiary carbocations are much more stable than secondary ones. Lastly, water attacks the carbocation as a nucleophile, and after you lose a proton, you get the product. It should be noted that some of this process is reversible. For example, in the product, the hydroxyl group can be attacked by a proton from the acid. That can pop off and go as far back as the tertiary carbocation, but starting material won't be reformed in significant amounts. The takeaway message from this is that carbocations will rearrange if and only if doing so will make them more stable. Tertiary are the most stable, followed by secondary. Primary carbocations and the methyl cation are so unstable they're essentially not going to happen. So remember, if you can move from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary, that will probably happen. We're going to close with an example that should give you a pretty good idea of how carbocation rearrangements work in practicality. If we wanted to go directly from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary, we would need a hydride shift, which is another option in rearrangements. They look very basically like this where a carbon-hydrogen bond is broken, and the hydrogen goes with the electrons to the carbocation. Well, there's our tertiary carbocation, but cyclopropane is already a very strained molecule. When you add to that, it being a carbocation, it's extremely unstable. So even though we went from secondary to tertiary, this is not good. Here's another option. Just like we saw before, a carbon-carbon bond from the alpha to beta positions next to the carbocation is going to break and move with the electrons over to the carbocation to create a new carbon-carbon bond. Doing this gives us a four-membered ring instead of a three, which is less strained, and it creates a new secondary carbocation. It's a bit of a lateral move from a secondary to secondary, but we've reduced ring strain. This is more stable. It will happen. If we follow this up with a hydride shift, now we have a tertiary carbocation. Yay! That was our goal! It always is! Finally, chloride comes in, creates a new bond, and we have, move out of the way little guy, box with a stick plus chlorine. The end.